afternoon, or I should say good evening, everyone. Welcome to another beautiful day with us on Numbers in You. As you see on that image, today was the big day. Um, uh, I guess this was uh, on the lips of most people, uh, especially here in the United States, since it doesn't come off, to which was the uh, solar eclipse, the total solar eclipse at that. And um, I want to thank you very much for joining us. I'm astronomerologist Lloyd Strayhorn, and uh, welcome to this Wednesday the 8th. So a couple of things that are happening. Today was a new moon. Today was an eclipse. And several days back was the start of Mercury retrograde. So this promises to be a very interesting, somewhat challenging to a greater or lesser degree month. No, it's not a month to go into paranoia or anything like that, but just be awake and aware, if nothing else. But before I do that, let me uh, uh, bring on my sponsors. Uh, uh, Manifest on Purpose with Miss Kimberly. Uh, you just go to your YouTube channel and click under or type in her name, K-I-M-B-A-L-E-Y underscore or Manifest on Purpose. Um, uh, my next sponsor is also King Simon. He will be on this Wednesday. I know Hank Rising Sun will be on with him. They have an event coming up this past, I mean, this coming Saturday and Sunday. Uh, with, I will be there on Sunday for this event. And last but not least, my um, last sponsor is Jazz Aphrodite. In fact, she will be a guest on a week from today for a couple of reasons. One, she's going to be talking about her master class. Two, her book is out. And so I can't wait for people to see the book and things of that nature. So with that, I'm very happy for all parties concerned. And I thank all my sponsors very, very much. I'm going to have a new set of sponsors more. But right now, these are this is the crew. OK, that's that's how we do it. Uh, before I start, though, uh, this is Monday, April 8th. 2024. The sun is in Aries. It was a totally eclipse day. The new moon was in Aries. Uh, it's a Mercury retrograde. So as I said, a lot of things going on today, a three universal month, a five universal week, and 11 master number universal day. Although somebody explained it, that it was a an awakening day, but I'll talk about that later. And it was in, so for those that are under Leo, those are under the sign of Aquarius and Cancer, uh, this should be an important day, and especially if you happen to be born on the 2nd or the 7th, the 11th, the 16th, the 20th, the 25th, and the 29th. Uh, I always forget at the top, I go right into uh, the announcements of the aspects, but please like, share, and subscribe. I understand it's good for the algorithms, um, whatever that works, and I will never DM you for monies whether it's live with Lloyd or LWL or Lloyd straight for myself, I will never DM you for that. If somebody has asked you for money on my part, in my behalf, it's a fake. So, okay. Now, uh, now that I've got that out the way, let me tell you about my experience today with the solar eclipse. I don't know how many of you saw it. Uh, I did a, I did a segment that was aired on TikTok. I got over 5,600 comments. Some were very interesting saying, I'm going to look at it anyway. Uh, I don't care what you say. Me and my dogs are going to look at it. Um, some asked some interesting questions for me. Well, what happened back in the day? Uh, like uh, the longest eclipse was back in 753 BC on June the 15th. And that lasted about seven minutes or something like that. You know, um, did they have any glasses then? I don't think so for some reason. I just don't really think so. But nonetheless, these were the kind of questions they asked. Um, somebody even talked about the glasses. Was I promoting the glasses for, it was a hardly on my mind. But what happened is one of my children gave me these glasses, right? So I looked at it, I put it on, right? and I says, okay. <coughs> and to be honest, if you put these on, you can't see anything, at least here in the living room. However, I says, well, when I go outside, I'm going to take a look. I didn't stare at the sun. I glanced at the sun. Totally different energy, okay? I'm protecting my eyes. I love my eyes. I love to see the things I see every day. What happens is when I put these glasses on, I could literally, literally see how the moon was blocking the sun. 
and how it was cresting. So for those who think that these are like corny and whatnot, I'm here to tell you because it's going to be another about 25 years. I think the next cycle that's coming into the New York City area will be somewhere in August of 2045. So if you miss this one, you got 41 years to go till you get to the next one in this area. Of course, you can go to other parts of the country. I'm talking about for you diehards that don't want to get out of New York City for the rest of your life to see this eclipse again. Well, if you miss this one in the New York area passing through, it's going to be in August of 2045. So that's a minute, okay? Or New York minute, as I call it. So anyway, these glasses do work. They do work. I, I says, well, even when I first put them on outside, I couldn't see anything. But when I stared at the sun, that's when I could see it. The rule is there are many of the comments that were left to me about people who said they've always stared at the sun and whatnot. The rule from what I understand. Now, I am no lunar eclipse expert. Uh, one says that you shouldn't stare no more than 30 seconds. I do believe that because when I did try to stare, it is very, very bright. Me, I'm not trying to prove anything, all right? I have nothing to prove to nobody. Uh, I know we have some dare people. Uh, one of the comments says, I always do the opposite of what I ask. Sounds like an Aquarius or a number four person to me, to be honest. But be that as it may, uh, it did. But what I did do was I took some couple of pictures and um, I couldn't see the crescent, but this is what one of them looked like, okay? Now, if you look to the right of it, you see a little kind of blue, it's like a crescent. Well, that's exactly what I saw when I put those shades on these eclipse glasses, except the curve of it was coming around the left side of the sun, not the right side of the sun. So that was the closest I could get to doing that. But I noticed also, if you look at the cloud formation, like in this one, how there was, because I kept the camera focused on the sun. And notice the, the, it's almost like a mist or something like that. Again, I'm not a cloud expert, a solar eclipse expert. These are just some of the things I've observed with this. And this is another one here where you can see the clouds. I think this was more toward when it was total, because it was a total eclipse in New York City where 90% of it was covered uh, at 3.25 p.m. today. And it ended up in Maine at 3.33 so anyway, I also took a picture of the crowd. There was a local park near me, and you could see all the, the, the people that were there. Uh, there was a lot of people, and they were just coming up. And this is, uh, this is another section of the people uh, that I also took. And it was, it was nice. It was very, 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 very nice. And this is, this is the last one. And it showed you people there. They all had on glasses. Some didn't have glasses. Some were looking up there and whatnot so good for them so for those of you who can prove that you're not affected i salute you for those that want to err on the side of caution like i did you know but it was interesting i tell you to see the sun once the solar glasses were and how it nicely crest the sun and then you could see it actually moving away it was just a very interesting experience to me since uh at 2045 the world may not be here according to the way some people want to kind of go to war all over this planet. So I says, well, let me get my dibs in there, focus on it now. Numerically, today is an 11 universal day, and it all depends on how you look at your numbers. And so I just thought it was fitting that it should happen to be on the 11 universal day, a day that's visionary, a day of enlightenment, but then there are other ways at which people look at it too. Now, uh, I'm gonna give this example here, uh, Jazz Aphrodite, uh, did this. She presented this on her Instagram and it was looking at it a whole nother way. The one thing about <clears throat> some of my numerology practitioners, um, they are doing things a little different, but this is a common way of people adding. In other words, four plus eight plus two plus zero plus two plus four equals 20. And two, 20 is called the awakening. Now she has a, on her IG a Jazz Aphrodite. I thought I, I thought I put it up there. Uh, evidently, I did not do that. We'll go to her webpage, Jazz dot. No, here it is. If you go to her page, you'll see that she's now doing these features that I, I really like. Okay, so as you see to the top right, 
she did the one for today then she did the one yesterday on the seventh she did the one the day before and so these are things she's beginning to do and she's putting them in a very interesting presentation of course she's promoting her book cards felt i mean numbers felt cards dealt uh her class but she will be here next monday to talk about her book that's finally out i will have my copy by that time thank you and so this is it so if you want to see these and keep up with what she's doing which i think is so cool i don't know what started but it's it's i like these i like i like following the sister when she does this and today was no exception because i was going to talk about the fact that today was and it all depends on how you look at your numbers now she explains further though that see in the tarot deck for which the compound numbers are described. The 20 is called the awakening. Uh, it all depends on the set of cards you're looking at. Uh, normally there's an angel with a trumpet and things of that nature, I think she illustrated. But then I've seen one where there's a child, a man, a man, a woman and a child with their hands clasped in prayer, kind of looking toward the heavens, kind of awakening. So it should be most fitting that this eclipse should take place on this particular day. Now, let me say this. People will say, okay, the eclipse is over and it's on to the next day. You don't understand. That's like saying uh, April 1st was Mercury retrograde and let's go on. These stars, these constellations, these eclipses, these celestial happenings affect you. So, for example, with, um, with Mercury retrograde, which started on the 1st of April, that lasts all the way until about the 23rd, 24th of this month. OK, the eclipse will have its effect even longer because I will be talking about, I think, on part of the show it, before the month is over, how the eclipses have affected when there was that earthquake in Haiti that really left it in ruins more than any other time. It was a major eclipse when the Titanic sunk on uh, April 15th of 1912, heading only two days short of New York. Two days later, on the 17th, there was a solar eclipse on that day. So what I'm saying is these, these cosmic celestial things that are happening in the heavens isn't just like, okay, 24 hours on to something else. It doesn't work like that. So what I'm saying is if you keep an eye on things, especially let me go back to Mercury retrograde. It rules communications, miscommunications, misunderstandings, mishaps, mis mis mistakes. And so... Anytime there's a technological or communication disaster, it normally happens at, like my phone was acting up. Uh, last week, uh, I put my charger into my computer because I saw it was about to go. And for some reason, the juice didn't kick in. So I was almost in a like, okay, how, what do I do? So I decided to put it around the other side. Unfortunately, it did. It also did that today before I started the show. So, but when you understand these things, phones will act up, computers will act up, Communications will act up. Lloyd, you said, meet me at this time. I said, no, you said, meet me at that time. This is when people get into arguments. They're normally contractual types of mishaps and whatnot. And it's not to be in a panic mode, but to be aware or awake and aware. That's all you need to do. Now, I will say this. For those of you who have been in, in negotiations with something, like getting a home and now you're coming down the home stretch, it's been the last couple of months because I understand it's a process well that's something else but if you decide to get up tomorrow morning on the 9th of april and say okay i'm going to work out this deal i'm going to sign these contracts it's likely to be some some glitches or some errors in it okay and as the lawyers will tell you the small words added the the large words added the small words take it away or as the attorneys officially say you have to read the fine print so what i'm saying is just don't assume and one of the perfect examples like since this is a three universal month, which is a month of activities, business connections and stuff like that. Let's say you meet somebody and you're taking down their number if they don't have a card and you're writing it in the last seven numbers is seven, six, one, four. Well, you might mistakenly say seven, six, four, one. Now you heard it said, but you'll write it different. And then when you go to call this contact, you're trying to be curious as to how come you can't get through. So double check everything and since in a three cycle things can be kind of rushy because of excitement and everything like that take your time make sure y'all are on the same page 
and you will save yourself a lot of wear and tear. So the eclipse, that affects people on a whole lot of levels. Uh, that's why they said, well, you shouldn't drink, you shouldn't uh, eat, you shouldn't sleep, you shouldn't get into physical exercises. To this day, I still want to know why that is. But most of them agree on the other side of the coin, spiritually, it is a time for prayer or meditation or reflection. So just this, this thing, because you get up tomorrow, don't think the eclipse is over. No, the effect of the eclipse started before today. And in fact, some who understand this knows that the day before, yesterday, the day of today, and tomorrow, given that three-way window, that this is when they take it easy. They don't ruffle no feathers. They just, they just stay in a state of peace and reflection and thankfulness and things of that nature. But it can make for something, and only because it took place in the sign of Aries. So when the Titanic sunk, the retrograde because it was also retrograde too when the titanic sunk on the 12th i mean on the 15th and 1912 in aries and the eclipse was occurring on april the 17th of 1912 in aries so so it's those kind of things and here we are again with the same configuration in the sign of aries so i'm not trying to point out doom and gloom but i'm just saying just be use some common sense don't rush don't try to beat nobody up don't try to get no confrontation. Take it easy. It's not that serious, as they say nowadays. Really, seriously. But people are on edge, which is not going to help it. And so once you have that understanding, you do well. So with that, I'm going to take a, a couple of calls and see how we do. And um, and by the way, uh, please share with you. You can put in your comments any of your questions that you will have about your experience, were some of you brave enough to just look up there with your eyes open? Somebody even asked me in the comments section that I got on TikTok, well, can me and my dog look? Well, yeah, y'all can look. I, I ain't stopping nobody. It's not my job, okay? I'm just saying when I, what little bit of research I've done that supposedly it is not best to look at the sun on any a, a, a lunar a solar eclipse day. That's all. That's all. Um, but many of you said how you've looked. My child has looked this and that, fine. And I'm glad that none of you are affected in that way, seriously, for real. I'm glad none of you are affected. I think that's very commendable. But anyway, I'm gonna start with the first one, Torelli Talks, and they are born on September the 15th of 1985, okay? Uh, she didn't have a specific question, but I can tell you this. She is an earth sign with an earth number. Now, each number and each sign is ruled by an element of nature and and on the West here is air, water, fire, and earth, you know, and, and, and oriental, they got ether and a couple other elements going on with that, but here, and it simply means that this would be a very pragmatic person. I noticed that earth signs with earth numbers are slow, not in a bad way, but let's say she got a family and she's rushing everybody to get out the door. She's the last one to get out the door herself. Okay. But I will say this, she has the ability to read a person like a book. She understands very well the character of a person, although she can't explain it. She's always a work in progress and she's in a five personal year. Now, some some people, some of my colleagues might say she's not there yet, um, but I'm, I'm going to do it the way I've been for all these decades. She's in a five personal year. So since five is one of your numbers, Torelli, it simply means now you're at a point where you can make some changes. If not, you would be considered in a full personal year, according to new schools of thought, which means you still got to slow your roll, hold it down. So if that's the case, if you're in a four year and a four month of April, that means you got to deal with some financial concerns this particular month. However, if you are in a five personal year, which is what I'm accustomed to, it tells me you're in a nine personal month, which deals with a time to let go, a time to in things, a time to manifest the things you want, and also a chance to travel. But your numbers are the six, five, and nine, and your best days are always on a Friday, Wednesday, and a Tuesday. All right. Okay. <clears throat> and please, as my moderator says, please get the thumbs up. It don't cost nothing. You know, uh, Stephen and Carol Williams out of Chicago, they tell you all the same thing. My man, True Lock, he tells you the same thing. That's when it's April 18th. His birthday's coming up next week uh 
So do that. And and as and one of my main, main persons, you can almost count that at the beginning of each show, <clears throat> Melanated Brown is always giving acknowledgement to the show. And I thank everybody so much. And yes, uh, as Jazz Aphrodite says, happy Eclipse Day, okay, at Melanie Brown. Yes, it is. And hopefully it'll be about you making you a better person. All righty, so let's see what we have. Okay, hi to Steve. See, these, these are the regulars that I really appreciate. Now, I notice people are starting to donate. I think that's nice. Um, there's Carol Williams from, from Chicago and her husband. And they always say, push the buttons, push the buttons. Okay, so this is nice. This is a big day. So maybe some of y'all can tell me what y'all did. Uh, Darius, I read earlier last week, he said he took a nice hot bath and gave thanks for everything, also manifested some. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, I like this, this title. I see I am a billionaire. I, I think that's a very good attitude. Okay. We all need to think like that. We'd be a much better world and a more um, happier world financially and whatnot. Okay. Colors. All these, these are all so nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Bruce Lee says to peace to the oracles and the architects and, um, these are all very nice. These are all very nice. And I'm, and uh, this is Kalia Redwine. She's happy to be <clears throat> happy to be here. I am too. But I gotta stop to tell you that because of this woman in Philadelphia named Jackie Barrios, bless her soul, that one day I'm at her house and she put a mic in front of my face, and that's what started all of this. And she encouraged me to do this and have a show, and to my credit too, I committed myself. I says, well, I'm going to start, I'm going to start in July and that's the seventh month. And now, now I think this July will be three years with almost 300 shows. So to Jackie Barrios, God bless you, dear, whether you're listening or not, I really, really thank you because it was because of her. I didn't think that people would be interested, but it's very good. Uh, Chris. Okay. I love the show. Thanks so much, Chris. He's out of Chicago too. He is January the 27th. Now he's born at 7.58 a.m. So that means to me, my friend, your son is kind of in the border of the 12th going into the 11th house. And that's where it is. I'm willing to bet you, if you do your chart, now depending on where you were born on this planet, your son is probably sitting on the very edge going into, on the 12th house going into the 11th house because it's almost 30 degrees in the sign of Aquarius in that sense. But anyway, anyway, for the astrology part, but numerically you are an Aquarius nine person and it indicates your best numbers are always the nine, four, and one. It also tells me you've always had a good opinion of yourself. It tells me you're probably out on your own between your 19th and 22nd birthday. And this particular year, without question, you are in a nine personal year. How did I do that for people who are new and seeing this? I simply took the month and day you're born, but instead of adding the year you're born, you take the year you want to know about, in this case, 2024. And so I'm very happy for you because you're in a personal year that matches your date of birth, a nine personal year, and you're born on the 27th, which is a nine. But what makes it interesting, even more so to me, Chris, is that next year this time, you the year will be 2025, which is a nine, and you will be in a one personal year. So that means this year is good to finish and next year is good to start. And the fact that one is because your key numbers are the nine, four and one. And so since one represents new beginnings, it will start somewhere around late September, October of this year going into this. So I would say this year and next year, I'd, I'd uh, you know, be your best friend. To be, in fact, it'll be the cycle you went through in the fall of in the year of 2015 and the 2016. You should have did well in that two-year cycle, but your key numbers are the nine, four, and one, and you'll find that um, Tuesday and Mondays are your best days. Uh, this is one of my favorites, Oracle. I know that Lloyd said that all your, yes, that's true. They're all my favorites if y'all haven't figured that out already, all right? I'm not partial. I really love the people that's on, and they help me a lot, and thanks, Stephen, and to Jazz also, he says. All righty, so let us do, and... And one of my other favorites, I tell you, I got nothing but favorites on this show. This, that's why I call this the Live with Lloyd family, because people are so supportive. 
and they're so consistent. And the people that donate, I really, really appreciate it, but it wasn't uh, that. And this is Bobby Herndon. I, we, we, we did classes in the late 70s and 80s in Harlem at the Harlem State Office Building. Uh, and she said she saw with glasses she was fortunate to purchase today. Uh, yeah. Um, actually, the glasses were supposed to be available at libraries. Who knows what's happening in New York City? Okay. A lot of things is going down in New York, I tell you. Um, but thanks, Barbie. Um, she and, and in fact, we did the newsletter in the 80s because in the and in the 80s, I did a Numbers in You newsletter. And she, among others of my students, were all kind of contributing writers and learning the craft of numerology. And they turned out to be the best of the best, OK? Um, <clears throat> OK. Uh, this is a person that saw it in Philadelphia. Yes, it went through Philadelphia 90%. In other words, because they said 90% was here. So they call it a partial eclipse. But with 90%, that ain't partial to me. You know, the 10% the, the is just a sliver, which is why when I looked at the moon through my glasses, it looked like the moon was in a, it was a sun. But if you thought of it with the darkness, it looked like the crescents of the moon, you know, like in the first quarter, stuff like that. All righty. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Taylor B., thank you so much. And happy Monday. Okay. Uh, uh, this person said in Alexander, Virginia, it was at 80%. But the point is that this wide band of the eclipse won't be seen until August of 2045. Now they're going to be seen in other parts of the country. In fact, I made some notes. Where are my notes? I made some notes where they will be seen at and okay, because I want them. Okay. Um, the, the, now the upcoming solar eclipse, there are five of them. So I'm going to get this out the way. Uh, there's one coming up on October the 2nd of this year, and it's going to be in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, also here in North America and South America. Then in 2025, there's going to be two in 2025 and two in 2026. So the one on uh, the March the 25th of 2025 is going to be seen throughout Europe, Asia, Africa, North and South America. Then the next one to follow, uh, these are all solar eclipses. The next one to follow after that would be March the 21st, 2025 in Australia, Antarctica, also the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Then there are two in 2026, and that's going to be on February the 17th. That will also be seen in Antarctica, Africa, South America, uh, the Pacific and Atlantic, and the Indian Oceans. All right. And then the last one will be for 2026 on August the 12th, and it will be seen in Greenland, Iceland, Spain, Russia, uh, partial to Europe, Africa, North America, Atlanta, Antarctic, and the Pacific Ocean. So these are going to be it. Now, there will be one coming up in 2027, and that's going to be in Luxor. Now, the reason why is this. Normally, yes, it is. I got that right. On August the 2nd of, 19, of 2027, you see, on average, the eclipses, when you see them, only last about four minutes and 20 seconds, 30 seconds, give or take. Well, the next one coming up will be in 2022 or March. This one is going to last long. The longest one, as I said much earlier in this, was in 753 BC on June the 15th. I don't know what, how they figured that out, but you know, I can't argue it because I wasn't there. But the point is, they said that that phase of it lasted seven minutes and change. Well, this one coming up on the 27th, uh, excuse me, on the 2nd of August of, 19, of 2027 will be seen in Luxor. So if you're in Luxor, Egypt, it'll be long. It'll last as long as six minutes and 23 seconds, it says right here. So that's going to be the longest solar eclipse coming up in the next couple of years. All right. So these things are sometimes short here in New York today. I think it was four minutes and under 30 seconds, you know. And it gives you that time, you know, but it, it transferred the whole universe. So anyway, it's just very interesting. Okay, good. Um, oh, 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 I saw, I saw Steve. He got his book. He's got his book. I'm going to get my book too, because uh, Jazz, uh, Jazz just said, uh, how Stephen Williams, you received your book, right? And uh, he says, Jazz numerology, yes. I can't wait. Next Sunday, 
I mean, next Monday, a week from today when she's on this show, I'm going to have my book in my hand. Trust me. All right. I would advise you because for those who know the value of books, bibliophiles, I think they call them, people who just love books, books have value like diamonds and things like that. Rare books. I have books in my collection. It's over a hundred and something years old. Okay. And, and an autograph too. You know what I'm saying? So those are very rare, rare books to have. And you'd have to appreciate that kind of knowledge. Nowadays, it seems like books are, yes, they still publish books, but now AI is doing it for you. But I'm talking about, I got the books from those old astrologers where you got to really do your homework before the internet and Google was around. It was none of that stuff. You really had to use any ephemeris and other books to find out the planetary arrangements of things. So anyway, uh, let's see. Sea goddess. That earthquake we just had was magnet 4.8. Just notice that. And let me tell you this. I'm sitting here in New York and I'm talking to a client on the phone. And all of a sudden, my floor starts rumbling. And I says, wow, man, the neighbors really got the music up loud today, man. What's that about? Okay. Not knowing <laughs> that was an earthquake. And almost most of the people I talked to had that it was because here in New York, we haven't experienced an earthquake like in California and definitely like in Taiwan and other parts of the world when they have earthquakes, it is serious, serious earthquakes. Okay. And I just thought it was just somebody with their music up too loud, man. I'm trying to do talk to a client. What are you talking about? What's all this noise? Not understanding that it was really, we were feeling the ripple of a, uh, of an earthquake. So I have to agree with see the goddess. Yeah. Uh, it was, it was very new for me, but you who live in other parts of the world, um, uh, that is true. Uh, Jazz, thank you so much. The eclipse has a six month effect. If you know your rising sign in your astrological chart, you can tell where it affect your life. Your rising sign is determined from, or your ascendant is determined from the time you were born and where you were born. All right. So that's why now when I do my newsletter, I'll say if your son, your moon or ascendant, because some they're, they're different schools. Some people say you should read your ascendant more. Some people say you should read your moon more or you should read your sun, which is traditionally the way it is done in most newspapers and magazines. But then you got other people who are more school in the art of the metaphysics like astrology and know that you need to focus on your sun, I mean your moon or focus on your ascendant. So for those of you who feel that way, you got a choice. You can read your sun sign and then you can go to the one that represents your ascendant. And then you can go to the another one that represents your moon. So by reading all three combinations, you got to get more of a composite of how the month is likely to go. That's a concept um, that I came up with uh, in doing this monthly forecast on the Zodiac sign. Thanks very much for that, Jazz. Much, much appreciated. Okay, uh, Cherry Lee, Cheryl Lee, excuse me, Cheryl Lee. Uh, peace and blessings. Oh, good. I was going to... Now, she's born on August the 22nd of 1958. All righty. So she's born in the year of the five. She's her keynote. Your keynotes, by the way, are the four, one and five. And thank you so much for the donation. And um, it's so interesting. You gave a total of four ninety nine, which adds up to twenty two. Uh, I'll be I'll be looking at numbers all kind of ways. So thank you very much for the donation. This particular year for you happens to be in a master number 11 personal year. So this is a very interesting time for you because not only are you born on the 22nd, which is a master number, you are also going through a master number 11 personal year at the same time. The beauty of it is this, the master number 22 is ruled by the sign of Aquarius, which is why you will attract that energy to you. And the master number 11 is assigned to one sign and one sign only, and that's the sign of Leo, your sign. So since you have all of this energy is going on, the special visionary energy of the master number 22 in the birthday and the master number 11 in your year, personal year, I would say this is a year for you to make do some very big things. And it's a transitional year. Transitional how? Well, where you live, you might rearrange things, move into something, move out of something, or just simply feng shui your home, as they call it. There could be a, a transition in the way you've dealt with certain relationships, and it don't have to be uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife. It could be with your neighbors, with family, with co-workers. So, so don't forget, these things take a whole wide range. And by nature, I think we want to just lock it into something <clears throat> that's more personal. And then the next one 
would be at the workplace, okay? So at this time, you might have a new station. That is, if you're not retired or anything like that. But this, but it also means take your time. And because of the cycle in it, also means to uh, change your diet or be very careful of your dietary laws. Your key numbers are the four, one, and five. And your best days are always, without exceptions, on a Sunday, a Monday, and a Wednesday. All righty. Okay. Now... Uh, this is up here. I don't know what this is, a YouTube for. Uh, this is the Goddess website. So I guess this is, so take a screenshot of it, please. And uh, so y'all can check that out. Now, this is Nicholas Noel, 10-10-1982. So, so actually, what's interesting is this. For me, I look at numbers all kind of ways. Born on the 10th month, born on the 10th year, born in the 20th century, which is 19, and one plus nine is 10, and he's born in the year of 82, and eight plus two is 10. So to me, you're 10, 10, 10, 10. But looking at it in reality, my friend, you happen to be in a four destiny. So I don't know whether this would be a master number. Hold on, it could be a master number 22, 10, 10, 1982. I rarely do this. I kind of like to do things in my head. No, you're in a four personal year. I mean, you have a four destiny, okay? Now, be, if you may not be familiar with these terms, destiny, life path, birth path, I've learned how to make it more easier for clients to understand. And I'll say the month of the end of the year you're born, Nicholas Noel says you are in the fourth grade in the school of life, which comes from the month, the day, and the year you're born because the month, your month, day, and year indicates why you're here, what you're here to learn over the course of your existence from birth to the other side of the rainbow. They now call unalive. I don't know where they came up with that, but that's the recent thing I heard. They don't say you transit, you just unalive. So I guess we're supposed to figure out what that means. Anyway, the point is, so this is your this is your experience. And so, first of all, your key numbers to me are the one, four, and nine. You are in a one personal year. New schools of thoughts will say you're not there yet. You're actually in a nine. You're still trying to bring some closure to some matters you should. My school of thought says this is the time for you to do things in a very independent manner and step out on faith and do the things that you feel are in your best interest. It also indicates, since I'm looking at 10 tens and all these ones going across because out of the two, four, six, eight numbers in your birthday, you got three ones. And then you're born on the 10th and that governs the eyes anyway. So you may wear glasses that has nothing to do with the year you're born under. And as a male, normally it's the right side of the eye if it was a female, it'd probably be more the left side of the eye. Who knows? And it also was heart palpitation, regular blood circulates. But your key numbers are always the one, the four, and the nine. And if you are in a one person year, that means this is the time to carve some things out that will set the stage for the next nine years. This is one of those rare years where you got to be really, really picky. Okay. Uh, this Karen Wheeler says an interesting an earthquake in Philly on Friday prior to the eclipse day. Yeah. See, these these are the things uh, that goes on. In fact, one of the theories about the earthquake here in New York City was probably in part in anticipation of the eclipse that took place today, because when it took place on March, the excuse me, April the 5th, it was an eight universal day and eight is an earth number. And in fact, when Nostradamus back in they did some it was it was back uh, on May the 8th of 1988, all those eights. That's when it was all this big to do about. Nostradamus was, was uh, de uh, predicting the last days are going to be a huge earthquake. Well, that day came and went. And the one thing I noticed about prognosticators, people who try to predict, they all say the last days and things like that. I, one thing I will tell you this, they're not here, but Mother Nature still is. So I'm going to always hedge my bet with Mother Nature. I understand. This is why you'll never hear me make no prediction like, you know, this is the last days and, you know, Y'all better sell your goodies and get packing and go into a corner or go down to uh, Virginia Beach, which uh, Kate, Kate, uh, uh, Edgar Casey said that would be one of the safest places in the last day, supposedly. Um, and you know what? I'll be gone and the earth will still be here rocking and rolling and rounding and rounding the circle. OK, so uh, I do understand that. I do appreciate people's predictions, but I'll say there have been people that have been predicting the last days of the earth since we got here. And I do know this one thing for real. They're not here. The earth is here. 
Okay. So forgive me if I'm a little partial. Okay. This is Leah Michelle. Uh, you said something about being a cancer. Um, yes. Um, on this uh, recording I did on this podcast, uh, Manifest on Purpose, when I was doing the 24, 2024 predictions for April, I was talking about cancers. But now I'll talk about you because, see, to me, you're a double cancer in a sense that not only you're under the sign of cancer, you're born on the 29th, 2 plus 9 is 11, 1 plus 1 is 2, and 2 rules the zodiac sign of cancer. So your birth number is exactly in the home where it should be, okay? And so with that, that tells me super sensitive, super picky, super picky about your eating habits, your dietary laws. And so if you have sensitivities with the uh, reproductive organs or female promises, you would describe it to me, that would make sense. Or you could be just the opposite. You could put anything down your stomach and doesn't bother you. And you know how to, as they used to say, burn those pots and pans. But I suspect, I suspect though from you as a cancer that you're more on the more discreet side when it comes to your dietary laws. Maybe being a vegetarian or semi-vegetarian or very particular about how you prepare your food or where you eat or whose plate you eat out of, those kinds of things. But since you are ruled by a two and cancer is ruled by a two and that rules psychic abilities, I'm saying you should always go with your feelings. And what's interesting, if you notice how a two is written, it's almost shaped like the intestines. So when you hear that phrase, go with your gut feelings, I think of a number two. That's what I do, okay? And so, you know, you gotta do is look at your life, Leah, in situations where your stomach was acting out of sorts and whatnot, more than likely something was up. If it wasn't, then you know, you're pretty good to go. Uh, that's how I'm looking at. And then when I look at the name Leah, that's 10, 13, 14. So it tells me when your parents, Leah, may have been born in the months of late May into June, which is Gemini, late August into September, which is Virgo, or born on the 5th, the 6th, the 14th, the 15th, the 23rd and 24th of the month, okay? Thanks, Leah. Your key numbers again are the two, seven, and six, and all three of these numbers are psychic and intuitive numbers. So I would tell anybody dealing with you, don't play the sister, all right? I wouldn't, all right? Okay, uh, let's go this one. Uh, this is DS. Um, they're born June the 6th of 88 and they were born at 9, 13 a.m. So that means you're somewhere about in the 11th house or your son. And it's, it says, uh, is overzealous, overzealous brainiac a name I should go by? Well, I, I will say this, uh, you've got a lot of fours in your name. I see you've got one, two, three, four, five of them. And you even start with D which is a four and fours like to think outside the box. They're very kind of, if everybody does it one way, they're going to do it another way. That's for sure. But at the same time, I always call six a work in progress. They either like to go to school. So what happens is I'm putting your birth number together. Like say you go to school and I'm, and I'm even do your name as such as looked at the numbers and repeat themselves, all those fours. That means you would probably do well in technology, computers, the mechanical, mathematical sciences, engineering, technology, things like that, or even in tools or jobs where you work with your hands and you're always in the process of learning those. So I bet you if that's what you're talking about, that when it comes to those areas, no one questions your authority. No one questions your expertise, that I can tell you. And what I'm seeing all those fours in your name and tells you kind of moody too. So probably the only people can knock on your door is Amazon and FedEx, somebody dropping the package off and getting out of there. But although when you're outside, though, you're very pleasant, okay? So anyway, your numbers are the six, nine, and three. And Nikolai Tesla says, those who, un those who understand and have, in your case, the three, six, and nine, although it's out of sequence, understand the universe, okay? Uh, this person, Key Divine uh, Essence says, um, uh, they're born, they're born, they says, give me an insight. Well, you are a water sign with an earth number. So you're a Scorpio eight person. All right. And what that means is this. See, the beauty of these elements is some blend well like earth and water. Others blend well like air and fire. And so in this case, you have elements by your sign, which is water, your birthday, which is earth. This combination where you can be a nurturing kind of person. I mean, anytime you want anything to grow on God's green earth, you need two elements. You need rich soil to put the seeds in and you need some water to get that puppy started. So once you know that, that's the kind of way you have. 
The only thing about H is they're normally very conservative because you're born on the 26th day. Uh, two plus six is eight. And H, uh, and, and I will say this, by the fact that you are in the year of the eight and you are born on the year of the eight, mean this is going to be a very, very significant year for you. Let there be no question. All righty. And so that's what I see. Now, I did see, I see there's a couple of people that made some donations. So let me kind of go back to that a second. If I can find them, I will find them. Um, this is Empress Speaks. She's a twin. That's interesting. About two weeks ago, I did a twin. Were they identical twins? Were they fraternal twins? And what was the spread? Was she born first or was they born last or whatever the case is? Did they have a name like um, Danielle, which is one L, or Danielle with two L's, Michelle with one L, or Michelle with two L's? See, so, and just, and as I always, my classic example, the name Catherine is spelled 24 different ways. So they could be twins with the same name, but spelled differently, which would tell me because each letter transposed into numbers sets off a frequency, a energy, a force that you can, you see. But anyway, you're born December the 26th. So this, you got two things going for you. One, you're a Capricorn, which favors Capricorn's occurrence and leverage. Two, you're born on the 26th and two plus six is eight. So now for me, already, I have you in a one personal year. New school of thought says, nope, you're still in the nine. This year, you still got to mop up. You still got to clean up. You still got to straighten up your act and cut your losses. That may be true. My school of thought says, now is the time that you need to look out for number one, Capricorn. You need to do what's in your best interest. That's what you need to do. And you'll find that if you do that, that actually sets the stage of what you're going to do between now and the end of 1933 because that's the next time the eight year cycle will occur for you. So this is how I'm looking at it. So you've got a lot of things going for you and you were born at 420, 420, um, 3 a.m. in the morning. So that means your your son was probably in sitting in the second house, the house of possessions, which is the earth sign anyway. So anyway, uh, that's what I'm seeing for you. Uh, your key numbers are the eight, three and six and your best days are always on a Saturday and a Thursday and a Friday. Okay. Uh, hold on one second. I've got some, I want to, I want to kind of make sure I, cause I'm not going to try to stay on long. I just wanted to share my experience today with the solar eclipse. This thing has been big with everybody. Okay. I did Cheryl Lee who made the donation and I'm going to come back to everybody, but I want to make sure cause sometimes people feel I over miss you. My my moderators will tell you I get so many people that sometimes I can't. Okay, uh, you Aswana, I was Awinasa Bay. I hope I'm starting your name right. Thank you. You are a water sign with an Earth number also, which is nurturing. But you are an old soul type of person, and you're born on a different eight. You're born on the 17th, which is the eight point of star Venus, where the other person I read born on the 26th of the month has a whole different energy. And in your case, it tells me that as you've gotten older, life has gotten better. And what's so interesting, if you look at it, 1961 is the year of 17. OK, so I'm looking at 17, 17. So between that time after your formative cycle is getting into your productive, probably in your late 20s, going into your 30s from there, I would say having a business temperament, a business type of mindset, business opportunities, always very mature, always misunderstood. And, and it's almost like being born in a full moon because the opposition sign to cancer is is uh, Capricorn and Capricorn rules the number eight. So you may have been born under a full moon situation for all I know, who knows? But I know this, your numbers are the eight, two and seven and your best days are always on a Saturday and a Monday, that is for sure. And you're a very intense person. So I would just have people <clears throat> take their time with you. All righty. So, okay. Thank you very much for that. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. Uh, Sylvia D said she burned some incense and wrote out her manifestations and stayed inside while watching through the window. Smart. Uh, it was exciting to see everything go dim for a few minutes and then back to sunny again, such as mother nature and who's going to stop it. Okay. Um, Hannah, Hannah Israel says he keeps seeing double numbers. Do you know what that means? 12, 12, 15, 15, 17, 17, 11, 21. 
well, you got two, four, five sets of numbers, but I will tell you this. The first one is a six. Uh, the second one is a three. The, um, uh, the second one, 17, 17 is a six. The 11, 11 is a four. And the 21, 21 is a three. So most of the numbers you asked about is either a three or a six. So that tells me three means something with the career, something and something probably with legal matters or Sagittarius or um, Pisces or born on the third, 12th, 21st or 30th of the month, because those sixes are coming up um, like a 17, 17. That means a Taurus or um, a Libra or somebody born on the 6th or 15th or 24th. So in essence is this. It's about either something dealing with creativity, something dealing with obligations or family matters or getting your act together in terms of your personal lifestyle or personal appearance or things of that nature. And the 1111 is always the most common number seen by most people. And that means in some way you might want to set the foundation to something very, very important. Already, and, and I thank Aswana. Aswana made a donation. And in fact, I just read her. And I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly. Sometimes I'm terrible with the names. Okay, uh, let me see. Um, I'm just, I'll be with you in a minute. I just want to make sure that I do this. And I do thank everybody very, very much. And I thank everybody for supporting what I do. Okay. Oh, yes, I did too, Stephen. He said he got a, yet uh, an email from Yala Van Zan about the eclipse bath. Yeah, there's a lot of things. People are talking about meditation. In fact, I had on Brother Rebels Bay uh, who had talked about uh, the solar eclipse and meditation. And I'm going to have him back on. Oh, this is uh, Rhonda Rhodes. Okay, Rhonda Rhodes. So blessed to be a blessing. Thank you so much. You didn't give a, you didn't give a, a, a birthday. But let me say this, so I'm looking. That's uh, 10... Uh, let me see, 10, 20, 30. I was trying to do this quickly in my head, but I see this. You got a lot of sevens in your birthday. Well, not a lot of sevens. Seven is often missing. You got two sevens in your birthday. You've got some twos and uh, you've got some fives up in there. So it just tells me with that combination that you would do well with writing. You would do well with poetry, theater, dance, things of that nature or may have had those ideas in the past to do that, Rhonda. Anyway, I thank you very, very much. And uh, uh, you're welcome, Tarilla. Uh, thank you so much. Yes, Red Energy and people well, okay. Um, so anyway, folksies, uh, can I do Empress Speaks? Yes, I did you, Empress. Okay, so now I can get back to everybody. This is my man right here, okay? Chill out, 88. Uh, happy heavenly birthday to Pops tomorrow. Uh, thank me and him share the same birthday. Well, my my father was born on April the 1st. He was born on April Fool's Day. And I had a father that was no joke, a fire sign with a fire number, which with me, I got some of my temperament from, all right? and uh, But I know you are an Aries 9, so I think your birthday is coming up on the 18th, or, or is it tomorrow? Well, whether it's tomorrow or the 18th, happy birthday to you. I talked about you earlier today. Uh, but thank you very, very much, man. Okay, uh, let me see. And then I think I can get back to everybody. Let me see. Okay. Okay, uh, Jazz responded to colors uh, on the road. They need to try that veggie cheesesteak. It really mm, sounds good too when you're hungry. I, I think I'm hungry too. Anyway, I think, I think I've got everybody. And... Uh, Okay, uh, this person, again, Bay. I have four bookshelves full of books. I only have two on numerology. I'm back on track for more direction of learning how to become a numerologist. Do you have classes? Yes, there's a couple of things. In fact, I have a Learn From Lloyd uh, series uh, called Learn From Lloyd, How to Read a Person Like a Book. Learn From Lloyd, The Next Step in Numerology. Learn From Lloyd, The Do's and Don'ts of Numerology that was collaborated with Jazz Aphrodite and myself. We did that in about two, three days. We hooked that up. We get, we were serious, okay? We would shed it, as they said. And uh, we turned that out, and that's listed as back. In fact, of my three series, that's the highest rated of the three. So, yes, I do. You can go there. I have another option. You can go to my TikTok under Numbers and You, 
and I have a numerology course I teach, which is totally different from my Learn With Lloyd series. But if you want to do this as a career or how you become a numerologist, well, over the summer, I'm going to be offering a course on how to do this as a professional career. You will be a certified numerologist. Out of the decades and decades I've done this with all of my credentials, I will show and shortcut you how to save yourself a lot of wear and tear, which I had no clue when I was coming up doing this. So uh, I'm, I'm going to show this at the end uh, where you can write in and they'll send you an application, fill it in, and uh, we'll get back to you. All righty. Thanks very much. Okay. I wanted to make sure I got everybody. So now let me do this. Okay. Um, Shamira is May 17th, earth sign with an earth number. That's for sure. And so your birthday's coming up, which means you're in your critical cycle, which means take it easy. And you would be in what is called a three personal year. Although old school would say you're still in a two personal year. And so if you're in a two, it just means take it easy, mind your diet, your dietary laws, your habits and things like that. But if you're in a three year, which is my school of thought, it means that this is your year to expand. This is your year to grow, Shamira. This is your year to really take your life to a whole nother level. You have to be in a good luck cycle because your, your numbers about your birthday anyway on May 17th are the eight, six, and three. And you happen to be in a three personal year, according to my school of thought, but you're still in a two personal year to the new school of thought. So whichever works for you, the point is, I wish you well, I wish you happiness. And thank you so much for uh, the donation, Shamira. And I would say that you it took a long time for people to really understand you, but you'll find that um, uh, you're gonna do very well this year. So more, more so knowledge says a lot of Gemini's in here, we're running the world. I guess if you feel that way, I ain't going to stop you. So obviously you must be a Gemini. Um, uh, Sonia said she donated $4.99. Thank you, Sonia. And um, uh, that means she's uh, May 14th. So she's a five. Now, each number has a home where it should be. The number five's natural home is in the sign of either the month of either September or um, if it's September, it's uh, June. All right. And in fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come up with something. Do you know the rarest birthday to be born on? And are you aware of the most common day to be born on? Do you know the most rarest months to be born in? And do you know the months, the most common months to be born in? There's a lot of things. Do you know that each of us have a golden birthday? Every single one of you. How is that determined? Well, I think on my next time I do this, I, in fact, I was going to do this, but the solar eclipse was such a big deal today. I says, well, let me jump to that and then jump to the readings too. But I'll explain all that. So if y'all just be patient with me on the next go round. But right now, this Wednesday, I'm having guests. Monday, I'm having guests. And the Wednesday before that, I'm having another guest. So it might be another week and a half or so, but it will be worth it. And I'll explain everything to you. All righty. Uh, this one, Clara Rodwell. Uh, they're born July the 1st, and um, they say, any advice for love and career? Uh, they are life coach. Uh, DDT is my business abbreviation, okay? Uh, that's 4, 8, 12. That adds up to a 3, okay? And you're born under one that deals with career. I see. It's interesting. DDT is your business abbreviation that adds up to a 12 or 3, and then you see lots of 4, 4, 4. Well, D is a 4. T is a four and T is a four. So whether you see it in letters or see it in numbers, you see in the same thing to me. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm using a Chaldean system of method. And I just think this is very interesting that DDT is the abbreviation and that adds to 12. So that means your business has to be careful of being the victim or the sacrifice for the plans and intrigues of others. And then you see a lot of four, four, four. That tells me you too have to be careful of being the subject of somebody's victim or sacrifice for the plans and intrigues of others too. That's why they call it mental suffering and anxiety of mind or the hangman. It's a picture symbol where a man is hung upside down by his ankle, all righty? So that means be careful who you grant wishes to in a business manner since you're gonna use the abbreviation DDT. Uh, maybe, maybe it all need to be spelled out. But anyway, um, to the new school of thought, you are still in a six personal year. To my school of thought, you are now in a seven personal year. So that means, Clara, to kind of take it easy, take your time, 
Make sure you observe first. Make sure you observe everything very, very carefully before you just put it out there without looking. This is a case where you don't want to leap and then you take a look. Uh, by that way, you already suspended in air. And we all know in gravity, gravity, everything goes down in gravity. Unless you just kind of shooting something up, but even then it must come down too. Um, it also tells me that if you do have your own business in the life coach, you would do well administrator and maybe thought about being a lawyer or doctor or scientist. And your last year, the year you are born indicates you will probably travel extensively and always know somebody who knows somebody. But you have four numbers. Your numbers are the one, four, two, and seven. And um, uh, this is Yana Woodhouse. Dr. Woodhouse to you. She's my girl, Yana. I'm going to have her back on soon talking about finances. You know, uh, this month taxes is over. And so she's probably swamped, but I'm going to get her back on. And she loves the app. She's always been supportive of what I do. And uh, she said she's going to sponsor the show one day. So I am so honored that she will do that. Uh, this is Kale Kalea. Um, uh, $2 donation. Thank you. They're born December the 25th. And their key numbers are the 7, 2, and 8. And it also indicates this year they're in a year. Well, the new the new school of thought says they are in a. Uh, uh, how how do I do this? Uh, okay, first of all, my school of thought says you're in a nine person year. The new school of thought says you're in an eight person year. So it all depends. So if you're in an eight person year, that means you got some major things underway. But if you're in the old, old school of thought, which is a nine person year, that means that this is a year where you need to wrap some things up bring things to a close and yet fulfill some of the things that you've been wanting to do for the longest time. But your key numbers are the seven, two, and eight. And those are your best days. Thank you very, very much. Okay. I'm going to take about two more and, um, okay. Um, I want to thank you very, very much. I think I got everybody. Oh, I left, I left out, uh, Sarah McLean. Sarah McLean is born on September 23rd, this is one of the luckiest birthdays to be born on. I mean, Ray Charles, uh, Bruce Springsteen, John Coltrane, Ray Charles. I mean, I mean, it's like it's like it's a whole list of celebrities born on this particular day. Um, so your key numbers are the five, six and nine. Your best days are always on a Wednesday, followed by a Friday, followed by a Tuesday. And this particular year, you happen to be in a four personal year. Or the new school of thought says you're still in a three personal year. So it all depends. And since three sometimes can be antagonistic, that means being careful to avoid getting yourself in any legal hassles. And in my case, since I consider you in a four personal year, it means you got to hit the brakes and make sure you get boundaries. But what's interesting, whether you're in a three year with the new school or four year with the old school, these two numbers oppose your, your birth number and and or your up or your zodiac sign too so it just means just be a little bit mindful that's all but nonetheless your key numbers again are the five six and nine all right everybody i'm gonna have to call this to a close i love doing this uh okay uh two more i'm going to give the donations to k green art uh her birthday's coming up uh april 26th yes you do have a birthday coming up so you are taurus so you're earth sign with an earth number which means very very pragmatic you're born at 2 16 p.m so that means actually you, your, 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 your son is in the eighth house. That's exactly where your son is positioned at in the eighth house on the sign of Scorpio. So that's very philosophical. But anyway, um, nonetheless, I thank you for the donation. But your key numbers, young lady, are the eight, the six, and the three. And you tend to be misunderstood. But the beautiful part about it is as you get older, your life will get better. I guarantee you. And the year you're born in suggests one of your parents is either a Gemini or Virgo or born on the 5th, 14th or 23rd of the month as well. And this is the last one I'm going to read for this donation. This is, uh, that's interesting. Look at that. They both born a day apart. One is So where the first one is um, our earth number with an earth sign, this is an earth sign with a, a water number. So that means a person who is very, very analytical, things of that nature, if you if my old school thought says you're still in the uh, nine personal year, the new school of thought says, I mean, my old school of thought means says you're in a one personal year, which means now's the time for you to do things that lead to greater independence and self-reliance to do the things you need to do. Now, the new school of thought says, well, that won't happen until next week on the 25th or whatever the case is or the week after. Um, but 
this says you've been happening since really late September, October of last year. So anyway, I want to thank everybody very, very much. I'm, I do have to stop. I'm spilling over. I do want to let you know a couple of things, please. Uh, one is I want to uh, thank all my sponsors, uh, Miss Kimberly uh, with Manifest on Purpose. Uh, it's a great show. Every Monday and Wednesday, hers comes out in the morning. And she now reads my daily forecast. It's on my uh, Star 8 app. And I do appreciate that. Uh, this Wednesday, I'm going to have uh, King Simon on. I know Hank is going to be with him. I don't know of the four other guests, uh, whether this set or these two ladies here, uh, whether they're going to be on uh, Dara and Dr. Shakira Moore or Mama Ella. So it's, it's going to be one. I know, I know we're going to be this Wednesday. Also, I'm going to have a person on out of Baltimore. His name is Jabari. He's going to be on for a couple of minutes because he and I are going to be doing something this week and I'll explain. And then a week from today, I'm going to have this beautiful lady, Jazz Aphrodite. She's going to be showing her book. I will have my book in my possession by that time. And listen, I got mine. The question is, do you have yours? All right. And as you see, uh, Stephen and Carol Williams, they done got their book already. They wasn't playing around. All right. And um, so, uh, by the way, and for those of you in the Baltimore, D.C., Maryland area, this is where I'm going to be at this Wednesday on the 13th. All right. I'm going to be there. They're also going to have live stream. So even though you can't get there, you can be able to uh, tune into what I'm saying. We're going to be talking about the numerology and it's and it's African contribution, which is an African science anyway. So that's what we're going to put a lot of emphasis on. Um, so that will be this uh, Saturday, the 13th, from 1 to 4 p.m. The doors will open at 12. And as you see the live stream, so take a screenshot or with your phone, whatever the case is, and reach out to them and set that up. All righty. I do want to let people know that my newsletter is available for April. I've done something now. People in Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, like myself and Pisces, say when it's mailed to them initially, they can't see it. And because it's mailed in an email format, again, if you look at the top right, it says view in browser. When you view in browser, you get the all of the zodiac signs, including those. However, at the bottom of these signs, under your best dates and challenging dates, you see there is a link and the link gets you to hear exactly what I said in the interview uh, about maybe 20% of what I write misses 80% of what I said in, in the interview. So if you wanna hear the full narrative of me explaining everything in more detail, and I took the time, it was very long because this is a crazy month with both retrograde and the uh, uh, solar eclipse happening at the same time. And so the, you go to Manifest on Purpose, and this is it on the um, uh, YouTube, all right? And for those, again, who wish to uh, learn how to do this as a career, uh, please send in to uh, Numbers U and Beyond Workshop, and you, you write to a star8llc at gmail.com. That's a star8llc at gmail.com. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. There's there's more, but oh, and by the way, I got to thank everybody for uh, doing the app. Um, uh, things are still being worked on, but it's much, much better than when it first came out the gate. That I can tell you. So I thank you very, very much for this. All right. Okay, everybody. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know what these symbols at the top mean. Well, whatever it means, God bless them. Um, um, anyway, uh, thank you very much. I look forward to seeing everybody on Wednesday. And all of you take good care of yourselves until then.